What's the most important thing you should be doing if you want to be fluent in Spanish? All right, I'm going to tell you in a second. But first, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and um, uh, check for some links for different types of books and materials that I, I'd like to recommend that I think are good for improving your um, knowledge of verbs in Spanish. Um, as an Amazon associate, I earn from the qualifying purchases. So let's talk about this now. I will tell you the most important thing to be fluent in Spanish is the preterite. The pre or they call it the preterite simple, or it has a few different names. But what it is, it's the simple past tense in Spanish. Now, why? Why is this so important? Because learning a second language is challenging as it is. You know that if you're studying Spanish. Uh, but basically learning the present tense and a lot of the tenses in Spanish, they're actually not that difficult. I mean, unless you're a terrible student, you, you have to put a little bit of effort out there. But the most challenging one, the one that stops everybody, is the preterite. That's the one, the simple tense, like when you say, I spoke, yo hablé, he came, el vino, they worked, ellos trabajaron. This is the, it's the simple past, the preterite it's called in most books. So what I'm telling you is you need to be super aggressive and attack the preterite. You just need to, that's exactly what I did. And what I think one of the main things that led to my success with Spanish, because all of the other tenses, they have a few, a few difficulties, but nothing compared to the preterite. If you don't learn the preterite really well, and it takes a lot of memorization if you're not brought up in a Spanish speaking environment, you just have to memorize them. You're, you're not really going to speak Spanish well. You're going to speak Spanish at best very well brokenly, a good broken Spanish. So you have to attack the preterite. And so I'm going to give you, if you have no idea, if you're having difficulty learning the verbs, I'm going to give you what worked for me. It doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. A lot of people use flashcards. I never did. Those don't work for me very well. Flashcards, it just, I'm looking at it, and then I'm not looking at it, and then I'm looking. It, it never really uh, strengthened my memory. So this is what worked for me. I got myself a large, now I don't have it here, here I have a small notebook, but I got myself one of those large five subject notebooks. You know, they're, they're kind of big for like for school, for middle school and high school. Large five subject notebook. Obviously it was blank. And then I just filled it up with verb tenses. Now you need to have some source. Now online there's a lot of different pages. I'll try to include a link to um, a, verb, a verb conjugating page, but you can find lots of them, verb conjugations in Spanish. Or you can get the book 501 Spanish Verbs. Uh, that's a really good one too. I'll leave a link to that one too. So uh, so what I would do is, so if you don't know the, the six forms, the yo, the tu, the usted, el, ella, the nosotros, the vosotros, and the ellos, ellas, ustedes, then go back. You know, you need to, that, I'm assuming that you know the six forms. And I like to put them like this, the singular on the, the left side and then the plural on the right side. This seemed to work best with my short-term memory and then my long-term memory. So I don't put the pronouns anymore because that's just more time that you have to write. And I'm, I'm assuming that you know that Bine goes with yo, yo bine, I came, right? So this is venir, to come. So this is how you're going to see them and you study them this way. You can say them out loud a few times. That's I definitely recommend that, right? So bine, viniste, vino, vinimos, vinisteis, vinieron. And you should be able to say all of them and, and practice saying them out loud. That's a good exercise too, right? Tener, to have. Tuve, tuviste, tuvo, tuvimos, tuvisteis, tuvieron. You should know them like really well like that. Practice saying them a lot. And then study six at a time. So I would do a group of 42 verbs to start off. Now you're going to have to do more than that. Probably around, I would say just as a beginner, your goal should be to know. I'm talking about irregular verbs here, not regular. Regular verbs are easy, even in the preterite. Once you learn the endings of the preterite, you just put on the ending, like hablar, to speak, um, to talk. You just put the ending on e Aste o, it's an AR verb. Uh, amos, astes, yeron, aron, sorry, aron. So, hablé, hablaste, habló, hablamos, hablaste, hablaron. 
you just put them on and those endings will work on any AR verb that's regular. I'm talking about the irregular verbs and and in the preterite there are a lot of irregular verbs that are commonly used in Spanish and that's why you need to do this. So I would do about 42 verbs at a time, six verbs at a time in each group. So what are you going to do? You're going to put six on a page, right? So what I do is you study um, all 42 of the verbs, just keep studying them, and then make yourself up a little quiz. And so this is how I would do it. I would make myself up a quiz like this on the page. Again, this might work for some of you. I'd make up the quiz, and I would do this on multiple pages with all the irregular verbs. So I would put the English, to have, to bring, these are all your regular verbs in Spanish in the preterite, to go, to know, and then you could either do it with the English, and then you have to produce the Spanish, or you could put the Spanish, venir, and you have to put um, to come, and then you put the six forms of, of to come there. So then what you do is, it's good if you have, uh, you know, a, a blue pen to make out the answers, but then I would have a red pen. I don't have one with me right here now. Have a red pen, because after you do the little test, so you could do maybe one page or two pages at a time or three, uh, then go with a red pen and look at your source material. You need to have the answers somewhere. You can't just, because you don't know if you know them or not. You need to have a book or a page that you're going to see the answers. Then go check, find the mistakes. So let's suppose that you fill this all out and you make a mistake here and you make a mistake here. Okay? In these two. So now what you do is Stop studying to have, to bring, to go, and venir, all, to come. Only study to know and to sleep. So then what you do is you create a new list. So you've just eliminated four, and you take those two, what were they again? To know and to sleep. And now you, you create a new list to do later, to know, to sleep. So you start creating this list of the problem verbs, the verbs that you're giving that you made a mistake with. Stop studying the ones that you got correct. Let's hope you got all of the six forms correct. And that includes the definition. You need you should know what it means too. Don't just know how to conjugate it. So then let's suppose after you do those 42 verbs, you go through this process six at a time. And then the problem ones you have about, let's say, 10, 10 verbs. So good. You start again. You take the 10 verbs, only those 10, forget about the other uh, 32, and now you create a new test with those 10 verbs. Study them a lot, study them for a good, you know, a little while. Then walk away, go eat an apple, let your mind, your memory stretch a little bit, then come back, and now you have your test prepared with those, only with those problem ones. So then with those problem ones, you take those tests, you do it again. And let's say you make a mistake here, and you and that's it. And then on the next page, you make a, one mistake. So now you went from those 10 down to 2, and now you take those 2, you memorize those. And so now in a short period of time, you can go, you can take 42 verbs and memorize them. And this, you could do this all in a day or a, a day or two. Now, if you're a language person, you realize that's pretty fast. Now, maybe it'll take you a little bit longer than that. You'll have to work on it for a few days. It depends on your, how your memory works. But then you could go to your next group of 42 verbs and do the same thing six at a time and just test yourself like that. It's a really great system. Uh, flashcards, if they don't work for you, try this and see how it works to uh, build your, your memory of those uh, the verbs and the conjugations. And this is just the tip of the iceberg, learning the conjugations of the verbs. You, this still doesn't mean that you're using them naturally in a conversation. You have to do this first. You have to memorize these verbs. You have to know them in the preterite. You can't just make it up. And you don't want to be making a mistake every time you're speaking. At least you want to be able to search your memory and say, all right, now how do I say that? Venir, to come. Vine, viniste. Vino, vinimos, viniste, vine. Ah, ellos vinieron. They came. Ellos vinieron. You don't want to just make it up. Ellos vinieron or some strange ending. You want to use the proper ending. You want your Spanish to sound good. So if you're serious about learning Spanish and becoming fluent, then that's what you need to do. I recommend that. Uh, and uh, 
I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to a few books there that I think are good for learning verbs. If you're a beginner um, and you're not even up to this yet, uh, these books are really good for building your verb, uh, knowledge of verbs, how to use them. It gives you a lot of practice. And, um, but I definitely recommend doing something like this to, to push yourself. You need to push your limit and to absolutely learn the preterite. The other tenses, the imperfecto, the imperfect, and uh, the present tense, and the future, and the conditional, those are all easy, in my opinion. They only have a few irregulars. The imperfecto, the imperfect, only has like three irregular verbs. That's pretty good. That's pretty easy. And the future has like... 10 or 12 irregular verbs and and they all and even the irregular ones all follow the same pattern so pretty much the same pattern so that's pretty easy uh yeah it's the preterite you have to attack the preterite when you realize that and you do it you're gonna then it you're you're just gonna feel like oh i'm so glad i got that out of the way now everything else is easy everything else is easy once you know the preterite uh i hope that you do really well with your spanish and um uh, I also teach classes, so check out for my italki link. You'll see that I um, I teach classes in Spanish, and I would love to help you out with that. Um, eh, bueno, que tengas una buena noche o un buen día. Nos vemos. Hasta luego.